This for a raw deal. A big company marches onto your land, sinks a well without your permission, then proceeds to threaten your livelihood. And it does it all with the consent and approval of the government. Now, this would be bad enough if it was happening halfway across the world in some tin pot dictatorship. But this is happening in our backyard. And it's our laws and our politicians who are letting it happen. You're under arrest. This is a citizen's arrest. Out in Queensland's central west, it's war. Yeah, I think I've been cut to place all up that road. I've been filming you. Hey, sit down. Get the facts right. A war that's pitting angry locals against the big gas companies. It's pretty high. I don't like even like being here, mate. I think we should get out of here, man. Sure. That, that's a lot of gas coming out of there, man. Properties are being taken over. No, the levels are high, man. Let's go. And now their water supplies are spewing out gas. That is gas. That's that's outrageous, really, isn't it? It is. It's insane. <laughs> gas is Australia's new gold. And just like the gold rush era of the 1850s, nearly every backyard in Queensland's Western Downs is being plundered by 21st century prospectors. So 60 of these, huh? 60 of these. It's a worst case scenario, I hope. Um. I hope. Trouble is, for local landowners like Kate and Scott Lloyd, it's happening under their feet, whether they like it or not. You had people coming here saying that they would potentially move your house if there was gas under it. Did they actually say that? They yeah. did. The Lloyds run beef cattle on 8,000 acres just outside the town of Chinchilla. And their property, like so many others in the district, sits on rich deposits of coal and gas. Imagine this. You've found your own slice of heaven. A few acres in the country where you've set up home. It's tranquil, it's peaceful, and you're living the dream. Then one day, the gas company calls. And it's not to read the meter. They've come to tell you, not ask you, tell you they're going to build this. A gas well right in your own backyard. And the law says there's nothing you can do to stop them. There's no, um, oh, we won't drill in this area. It's an exclusion zone. It's just that if there's gas there, you know, it's ours sort of thing and we'll take it. Yeah. What do you say when you hear that? Oh, it's just the relationship from there on just deteriorated. pear shaped. And, um, yeah, it did, it did get, it just went, it, it was pretty awful. Yeah. Is that the point also when you realise you've lost control of your own property? That's Absolutely. exactly right, yeah. In Australia, most land, irrespective of who owns it, is subject to being mined if it sits on valuable resources. And here, it's coal seam gas, found in the deep veins of coal metres beneath the ground. It's in vast tracts of Queensland and all over Australia. Coal seam gas wells are already being drilled in Western Australia and New South Wales. We see it as a very important industry for future job creation and wealth creation here in Queensland. Gas companies have signed contracts worth up to $100 billion to supply gas to a number of countries for the next 20 years. According to Queensland's Mines Minister Stephen Robertson, it's an industry that has a long life. It's uh, an industry that, uh, just in terms of royalties that will come to government, worth around about $850 million. But uh, I think more importantly, uh, if all of the projects go ahead, we're looking at around about 18,000 new jobs. So it's worth money and it's worth jobs. Mm. But for how long? Well, as long as the resource lasts and uh, the predictions are that uh, Queensland's coal resources uh, uh, have a horizon of at least 200 years. 
To date, gas companies are planning to drill 30 to 40,000 wells in this area, and about $1,500 a well is paid in compensation. But it is an invasion few landowners are prepared for. We are going to be a prisoner in our own home. They are going to rip it out of the ground as fast as they can. They're going to sell it to China and India and so on as cheap as they can. And they're going to leave your area an industrial wasteland. At a town meeting we called, local residents were angry. You better wake up and smell the roses, because all we're smelling at the moment is bloody gas. <laughs> I feel it's the most one-sided legislation I've ever been associated with in 27 years of practice. Peter Shannon is the bush lawyer every town should have, passionately fighting what he sees as a serious injustice. If you haven't been associated with mining or the gas industry generally, you live in a dream world of thinking that your land is your castle. Most of the landholders that you're dealing with, did they ever think that this would happen to them? I don't think there's been the remotest conception uh, of the reality that is now facing them. And it's incredibly destabilising to them because they have built generations, they've built lifestyles, they've had plans, they've had plans for their futures uh, and their kids' futures. Without doubt, these are lucrative deals for the Queensland government. But coal seam gas mining has been blamed for shocking health and environmental impacts. I'm 54 and she's 59. She's changed. She's changed so much. In Rifle, Colorado, Steve believes his wife, Chris, has gone from being a healthy, vibrant woman to this because of the pollutants caused by gas mining. I was afraid she was going to bleed to death. She'd wake up in the morning and she would be covered in blood and her nose would be bleeding just like crazy and the pillow was covered with blood. Critics claim illnesses, including cancers and neurological disorders, are a result of the gas extraction process. In what's called fracking, a concoction of chemicals and sand, are hydraulically rammed into the well to fracture the coal seam and release the gas. The chemicals used are a closely guarded secret by mining industry officials. Do you know what's put down into those yes. wells? Do you know what chemicals are used? Um, not uh, not uh, totally, no. Shouldn't you? Uh, Shouldn't you know what chemicals they hydraulically ram down those wells? Well, what I'm assured about is that the processes that they employ are appropriate processes for the extraction of, of that coal seam gas. And America has seen more fallout. Household taps suddenly gushing gas as well as water. Whoa, Jesus Christ. And backyard gas wells exploding. We heard this pop, and then our son called. He said that the well was on fire. It was blowing right that way. And then um, the fire trucks came, but they waited way down because there was nothing they could do. All of which makes the Queensland locals nervous about the same wells springing up here. That's an example of a very dangerous gas well. And they're concerned enough to be carrying out their own inspections. Okay, highest reading again. Since these videos were shot, the gas companies have been forced to retest and repair wells that have been leaking. Now that'll do for today. That's what I've seen enough, mate. I do not want to be around this well at all. I don't want to start a vehicle near it, mate. And here at a water bore on a farm near Chinchilla, something very strange is happening. 
now obviously we're getting substantial amounts of gas. Is, you know, is that gas that's making that That's the gurgling gurgle. noise. That's the gurgling noise you're hearing. So Local Dane Pretsky says since mining began the nearby, the bore is spewing more gas than water. Are you ready for this? And just to prove it, when you light it, it does this. When you look at that, you realise that um, yeah, something is seriously wrong. Well, you can't deny it. The question is, what's caused that to happen? You can go on balance of probability, and you can. it, it seems to me that it, it's, it's not a natural event. You can hear it. It's got that angry, yeah, yeah. I'm going to blow any minute sound. Yeah. Gavin Mudd is a hydrogeologist from Monash University. He warns that coal seam gas mining has the potential to impact Australia's huge reserves of underground water. A lot of the, the, you know, the communities around here are dependent on groundwater uh, and the coal seams uh, are very close to where, where people are pumping uh, groundwater from. What is the worst case scenario as far as you're concerned? The worst case scenario, uh, uh, I think, yeah, uh, to be frank, is really the, the, the long-term impacts on the Great Artesian Basin. D doesn't that mining fracture the water table? That's one of the allegations that is made. Is that not true? Well, no. no. That's one of the allegations that is made. That is why we've put in place the Independent Queensland Water Commission to oversee that. But is it not true? Sorry? Are you saying it's not true? Well, the, there is... Or are the, you saying you don't know? No, no, there is a body of opinion that says that once the water is extracted out of the coal seam, that that causes water to um, be released from the artesian basin. There is another body of opinion that says that that is not the case. See, these are vital things to know before any of this should be taking place, and you don't know. No, what we've got in place is a, is a very vigorous monitoring regime. <laughs> When gas wells are drilled, thousands of megalitres of water are released, along with tonnes of salt, none of which can go back into the soil. The gas companies declined to attend our town meeting. We have enormous wealth of asset right beneath our feet. It was left to local mayor Ray Brown to face a sometimes angry crowd. Why don't the government come clean? This is very poisonous, dangerous thing you're doing to the farmers' water. Look, even as late as today I've been assured in the fracking process they use in Australia a biodegradable presence. Now they don't frack a lot. But they frack. They do frack, mm -hmm. from what I understand. It is disposal of toxic water that ran into my dam. This is the biggest single issue that we've seen in this country ever. We're concerned about the future of this area. We won't have an area in 20 or 30 years once this mining's come and taken one. <laughs> First, the state government's approved another major gas project that's despite a fresh cancer scare. Dangerous chemicals have been found in Moran Bar, the third discovery in three months. <laughs> Just outside of Moran Bar is Ross Fleur's cattle property. He allowed Arrow Energy to drill hundreds of gas wells. Now two have tested positive for cancer-causing chemicals. Yeah, we've been told that we'll be in independent to test, hun, and we have to trust them. Yeah, it's all up to them. But it's the third time it's happened in just three months. Benzene was found at drill sites near Miles and a coal gasification project at Kingaroy was shut down after underground water was contaminated. Uh, there's no such thing as a brand new industry starting up without some uh, risks attached. What we are doing is putting in place the strictest possible environmental management system. But farmers are increasingly worried. They, well, if they ruin the groundwater, well, it's not really not much use to anybody, is it? Whoa, Jesus Christ. 
A confronting new documentary shows what happened to groundwater in the U.S. when big gas companies moved in. Six states have documented over 1,000 incidents of groundwater contamination. It bubbles and hisses when it comes out. The neurological effects are very insidious. Everybody was sick, including me. I have these lesions in my brain. The filmmaker is now here investigating our gas industry with reports children are suffering rashes and headaches. Unfortunately, he warns he's seen it all before. I foresee, you know, just like is in the United States, a political battle between people and big corporations and the government who are trying to make some money. The Premier today approving a $35 billion liquefied natural gas project for Gladstone, but with 600 conditions.